Hey guys, it's December 22nd. The time is 4.10 p.m. and the temperature right now is 4 degrees Celsius. That was the southern end of George Street I was just standing on and I'm currently walking north up George Street on the west side. And for this one, I'll be heading north up the entire length of George Street, passing through Moss Park to where it ends at Carlton Street. And then from there, I think I'll continue on north up a street called Homeward Avenue. You can kind of see the tip of the CN Tower peeking out there. Just on my left is St. Michael Catholic School. And on the right is the Woodsworth Housing Cooperative. There's a look at David Crombie Park. He was a former mayor of Toronto. And here's a rather stunning view of the skyline just in front of St. Michael or St. Michael Catholic School. It's a rather neat vantage point. So that would be looking west towards the financial district. And just in front of me is the Esplanade. George Street is primarily lined with residential developments. And for the most part, it's a pretty nice street. Although once we get to Moss Park and then head north up past the Seton House, things can get a little dicey, you could say. Maybe I'll head over to the other side of the street and check out these inflatable snowmen. On George Street, once I get north of Carlton, we'll be going by the Seton House, which is a large homeless shelter, originally slated for demolition back in 2013, but it's been spared a number of times. And most recently in November, the mayor announced that that plot of land would be redeveloped and replaced with another shelter that also offers long-term care facilities. I'll also be trying to spot a few historic buildings along the way. And this here is Front Street East. Maybe I'll cross over to the other side. That's the Flatiron Building off in the distance. And one block to the west of there is the St. Lawrence Market. So flanking George Street on either side is Jarvis Street, which is a major north to south street just to the west of here. And just to the east is Sherburn Street, another major north to south street that runs through downtown. This is certainly a pretty long light to have to wait at.
And I think this building here is actually an old stable. I might be wrong on that. I'm just going from memory, but maybe we can find a plaque on the building. It's currently the, the Haley Fine Arts Center. I knew I had seen this before. Little York Hotel Stables and Coach House. This dates back to 1880. And the building just in front of it. I think I've seen a plaque on this one too. This is King Street East. This area is known as the St. Lawrence neighborhood, but it's often also referred to as Old Town Toronto. And this would be the former site of the Little York Hotel. That dates back to 1879. There's a look east down King Street. That's a rather neat view. West Down King. That's got to be a thumbnail worthy moment. This is part of the rather sprawling George Brown College campus, just on the right here. And if you're interested, I actually recorded the walk I took from King Station down to the southern end of George Street. I recorded that on my way to record this walk, and I'll be putting that one up on my second channel, which is Johnny Stumbles. There you'll find various bonus content like that. That's also where I put exclusive member videos for Patreon and channel members. Those videos get unlocked for everyone else after 30 days. And I just uploaded an exclusive video for them today. And there's a look at Toronto's first post office. Maybe I can zoom in on that. I've highlighted that before in a previous walk along Adelaide. There's a look west. And here's another plaque. Let's see what this guy is. This is the addition to the Bank of Upper Canada, and that dates back to 1851. There should be some more historic properties along the way. That is one little trick about the city of Toronto. If you ever see a building that looks kind of historic, for lack of a better word, you can always check out around the front of the building to see if there's a plaque. I think I heard my keys jingling. I'm just going to slide them into my wallet so they're a bit more secure. And we're at Richmond Street. Just yesterday I recorded a bike ride that went all the way along Richmond and Adelaide Streets through downtown. That was kind of a neat ride. And there is the George Street Diner. That place is a local institution in this area. I used to live down on a street called Longboat Avenue, which isn't too far from where I started this walk. And coming up to the George Street Diner was a regular thing. 
They are currently only open for takeout and delivery. I would definitely check out their website if you're interested. That's exactly the kind of small business that needs our support these days. There's some older homes. I would date these back to probably the late 1800s. I'd be quite surprised if they weren't that old. I was trying to catch a street name for this. That was kind of a neat look. And I'm tempted. I see a sign for Bootlegger Lane right there. I see another sign for Bootlegger Lane. So I wonder if this kind of bends in an L shape. But it's fenced off. That could have been a neat mini detour. And right here is Queen Street East. And this is where George Street comes to a temporary end, as Moss Park is in the way. This area does not have the best reputation in the city of Toronto. In fact, one block to the east of here is the intersection of Queen and Sherburne. Which I guess she could use the word notorious, or sketchy maybe. There's always a lot of interesting people hanging out around there. And it's not uncommon to see police cars and ambulances. Although, in my experience, I've ridden my bike and walked through there several times, including with a camera, and I've never been bothered. Also, having lived just south of here in the mid-2000s, I also never really had any air problems with the area. It is worth noting that there is a safe injection site There's also a lot of efforts to give out food and other much needed things like that in the area. So you tend to have a higher concentration of people that are on the streets, unfortunately. And there's a look at the Moss Park Armory. And that has been used in past years as a homeless shelter for when there's extreme cold weather. Rather than head straight on the left side of the tennis court, so I'll come through this way. It might be a bit more interesting. Right here in the summer, there was a large tent set up with at least a dozen or so bicycles in front of it. I can only guess that that's where some of the stolen ones ended up. We need to take care of each other. That could not be any more true. There seems to be a lot less tents right now than the last time I walked through here. I can only hope that means because people have found their way into warmer shelters. But of course, that might not necessarily be the case. It might be interesting at some point to do a walk with someone who works in social services in the city of Toronto and they can explain a bit more about some of the facilities we see and 
measures in place because for the most part we're just kind of left to speculate. I don't think that's necessarily the best approach. There's a Salvation Army directly on the other side of the armory. And George Street continues. I think that guy could have done a little better of a job of hiding what he was up to. Here's an old hotel that's being taken down and redeveloped. You can see there's a lot of condos going up around Jarvis and Dundas. Embarrassed to say, I don't remember the name of the school. I've looked that up in the past on a prior walk. Someone in that car is going to have bad hearing. Maybe they already do. That's why it's so loud. And we are at Dundas Street East. So this area is known as the Garden District, named after the Allen Gardens, just to the north of here. And there's Fillmore's. Hotel open, bar closed. Darn you again, COVID-19. It's also an adult entertainment parlor, center, strip club, whatever you want to call it. It's been a long fixture of the neighborhood. But I think they are getting the boot as this building is slated for a redevelopment. It's a bit reminiscent of the old Jillies that used to be down at Broadview in Queen. And 46 stories, that'll be a monster. But it looks like they're incorporating the existing facade into the new building. And I honestly can't say I've ever been there. It's a rather noisy streetcar. And this is where George Street has a bit of a reputation as the Seton House is just up ahead.
I'm sure these old buildings have some stories to tell. I'm looking for a street number, as I know 297 George Street is a former Salvation Army rest home that dates back to 1856. And that is 301. So this must be it right here. That's kind of neat. And at 305, there's an old house that dates back to 1859. That's known as the Thomas Meredith House, I believe. And this would be it right here. So this guy's a, another historical property. And at 309, this property goes back to 1887, and that is, I'm trying to remember, I think the Robert Armstrong House. And just up ahead is the Seton House, which I mentioned the mayor recently announced plans to redevelop and replace the structure. It's quite huge, but I think the consensus is that it's woefully inadequate for the function that it serves. There's a look into part of the property. In the summer and spring, normally this side of the sidewalk would be lined with people just hanging out. Presumably people who spend the night in the Seton House. It's a long, long-term and annex harm reduction program entrance right there. emergency shelters and administration. Apparently the new plans are for a much larger, more modern facility. It'll definitely be a welcome addition. And just here, on the north side, is the Dixon Hall Schoolhouse Hotel. I think it's actually a hostel. There's a look south down George Street at the Seton House. And this guy goes back to 1910. So this would probably be considered the worst street in Toronto, at least this stretch of George Street, if you were to pull people who live downtown. And as you can see, it was really not that bad at all. And the southern part of George Street is quite nice. Alright, I will head east along Wellesley to this crosswalk as there's quite a bit of traffic. That lady on the phone was <laughs> describing the man that just walked past me. She must have been calling ahead to someone. I thought that mannequin was a person. So I'll just keep on heading north for a bit and we'll pass through the Allen Gardens.
then as I mentioned, I'll see if I could find Homestead Avenue. Just give a friendly wave to that driver. I know it can be annoying if you wait at a pedestrian crossing and then when traffic finally clears up someone like me comes along and jams the button and you gotta wait a little bit longer here's the Allen Gardens I've certainly passed through here before there's a large rather nice botanical garden right there but that would be currently closed some dogs fighting. <laughs> Gotta keep your doggies under control and on a leash. Hopefully it was all in good fun and no one or their pets got hurt from that. And there's a off-leash dog park just up ahead here. And this street just to the north would be Carlton Street. I was originally going to end the walk here. And I thought maybe I'll just keep on going north a bit as it's not even 30 minutes yet. What a friendly looking guy. So this is Carlton Street I'm currently walking east along the south side of.
Okay, this street here must be Homestead. Sorry, I keep saying Homestead, I meant Homewood Avenue. I don't know why I kept saying that. But this is uncharted territory for this channel. I have yet to walk up this way. I think that girl who was yelling just saw me because she looked over and raised her fist in anger at me. I had kind of twisted my camera out of the way. Hopefully she gets the help she needs. There's some old houses. Okay, just keep moving, folks. Nothing to see here. Have those towers off in the distance there are part of the St. Jamestown neighborhood. I recently recorded a walk down Ontario Street which runs right through the middle of St. Jamestown. You can look that one up on the channel if you're interested. I think that driver should have exercised a bit more patience than that than insisting on turning right in front of that guy. I'm definitely going to have to look up some of these properties online when I get home. There's the Lady of Lords Public School. And here is Wellesley Street just up ahead. So when I get to the end of the street here, maybe I'll head over to a station, but probably not because I have my gear with me to live stream. I think I'll do that right after this video.
Here's Mosley Street. And I'm not entirely sure what this facility is. And this is Wellesley McGill Park. And we are at the end of Homewood Avenue. I'm sure I've ridden my bike through here a number of times. I can't recall having recorded up here or even walked along this street before. There's a first time for everything, I guess. And this street here is Lord's Lane. I might as well head over to Sherburn to wrap things up. And I hope you enjoyed this walk up George Street and Homewood Avenue, which could perhaps one day be renamed Homestar Avenue in honor of my repeatedly getting the name of that street wrong in this video. I guess I'll have to do something pretty great at some point to justify that measure being taken, but I guess stranger things have happened. I'd like to thank the channel members and Patreon members who support the channel and everyone else who has subscribed to this channel and my second Johnny Stumbles channel. And here we go. Sherburn Street. So just to the north here at Bloor Street East is Sherburn Subway Station. But I will end this video here. So thanks again. Leave me your thoughts and comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, I will catch you on the next one.